funny thing just happened. I finished recording for the day. I put everything up. I walked to my front porch and I had this package and I know what's in it. So I had to bring it to you guys because I'm just not sure if I have mentioned how blessed I feel to have such an amazing support group of people with my videos, my subscribers, my group members, my Patreon patrons. Like I, I love what I do. I loved what I did in framing, but the stress of commuting and just the corporate world in general was killing me, like physically killing me. So having said all of that, this is a special present from one of my group members and subscribers. So I'm going to show it to you and you guys are going to cry with me. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. I'm gonna open it up. So this present is from Carol Peck. Okay. I'm going to open the bubble wrap because I want to reveal what this is and I want to talk about why this is so important to me. Norgeson, as you know, has just amazing paintings. They're totally different than anything we do, right? The texture is incredible. The paints the come in tubes and all of that stuff. So I love the Norgeson paintings. Nadia and her husband are going on maternity leave for an, a year. And they have had some really good specials at their website. And I could not afford to do anything when they had those specials. And they had this painting that I wanted from the day I was sent their owl, Queen of the Night painting. So I had an eye in this painting and couldn't get it. And then it sold out. And I was like, Nadia, do you happen to have any more? Do you, is there any way you can get any more? Do you have any in stock somewhere? Did somebody cancel their order? I mean, like I harassed that poor woman, pregnant woman. <laughs> to death, um, but she didn't have any more. So one of the group members saw that I was looking for this painting and she had purchased it and she sent it to me, you guys. She bought five paintings from Norgeson when they had their big sale and she knew I was looking for this. So she sent it to me and I'm gonna show you what it is, but I'm gonna have to tell you the story behind it so y'all be prepared. I'm just gonna tell you. All right. It is this piece right here. Okay, you can see it on the front of the box as well. I'm going to get this open really quickly and then I wanna tell you why this deer is so significant. All the contents are in the back of the painting. They're cellophane wrapped to you know, stay in the painting while it ships. They're usually in a box and Carol had taken it out of the box and had just used protective, you know, packaging around it, which was fabulous. It is in perfect condition. And I'm gonna open it. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise. I'm super excited, y'all. So let's just talk about the contents really quickly. Tubed paints, mini paint pots, the most fantastic brushes that I absolutely love and have been using for four months now, okay? I love having another set of these brushes. The reference guide, their instructions, you know, are in a foreign language, but that's okay because y'all don't need that if you have me, right? All right, so let's look at the front. And this painting is so significant to me. Okay, y'all, story time with Melanie. I gotta do it. On August the 6th, 2013 you guys know I've got a video on it my son was killed on August the 7th I found his body after he had drowned in a flash flood um in the creek behind our house a little bit of backstory that same year in March the company I worked for as a portrait studio manager shut its doors with no warning Nobody knew what was going on. They're the same company that owned Sears Portrait Studios. You might have noticed they all went under at the same time. I actually was the manager of one of the locations in a Walmart um, called Picture Me Portrait Studios. Well, I had lost my job abruptly. I was a manager, so had a pretty decent income and loved what I did. And so I had started putting in applications immediately once that took place. I hadn't heard anything. Like I had gotten no bites of any 
anything I had put in, and I ended up filing for unemployment. So at the time of my son's death in August, I had just been receiving unemployment for about two months. Otherwise, I would have never been able to survive because he lived here and was having to pay child support for his child and was financially just, you know, super stretched himself. And I had two other minor children living in the house. August 11th was my son's funeral. And within two days, I had a call from Portrait Innovations in Anderson, South Carolina about their desire to interview me for a position that they had coming open. I told the young lady, I said, let me, let me tell you, my son just got killed a week and a half ago, but I will be there for the interview. And so she set the interview on a Sunday at one o'clock. It was the 18th of August. And I wasn't sure how I was going to emotionally manage working a job again when I had severe PTSD and suffered a major loss. And I walked out of my door that day on a Sunday at noon and there was a deer standing in my yard right past my van, right in the middle of the yard, middle of the day, crazy, random, I mean weird, you know what I'm saying? Like as a mom, you're looking for a sign everywhere, show me my boy is still around. Give me a sign. Give me a sign of his presence. Because I'm going to lose my mind. And intentionally drive off the road. If I don't know that he's still here. In some way. So. I'm sorry you guys. It's so hard for me to tell a story. Um, okay so. This deer stood there and looked at me. And I was standing on my porch and I could see over the top of my van. I actually have a video of this because I've started recording. And I was by myself. And you already think you're losing your mind because you just lost a piece of your heart. So your mind goes too. And this deer stood there and it just looked at me like it didn't run. It didn't bolt. It didn't look scared. It just stared at me. And I talked to it. I finally, after like a minute or two, I was like, Logan, is that you? Are you trying to show me that you're still around? And that deer stood there and never moved. So minutes go by. And I'm just standing there and I'm kind of easing myself toward it and it did not bolt, it didn't leave. I was in my van, pulling out of the yard, had the window down when that deer turned around and walked away. It didn't run, it barely just kind of trotted off and went off into the woods. So when I saw this deer, it wasn't like I thought, oh, there's Logan. It was like I felt in the pit of my soul, that is my son showing me, and that's God, showing me through this deer that my son is okay. So I get in my car and I go to this interview and I had an origami owl necklace that had all of Logan's things in it. It had an L and it had, he was, he loved St. Patty's Day. I had a lucky charm. I had a, um, I had a four leaf clover in it. You know, whatever. I just had this necklace on. It was kind of my like good luck charm. And I go to this interview and the girl says to me, the manager says, I was looking to fill a full time position. And I said, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I can give you a hundred percent, but I'm not sure I can give you a hundred percent right now. And she said, well, I have a part-time position opening in six weeks for Christmas, for the holidays. And I said, oh my gosh, that would be perfect. If you could consider me for this position in six weeks would be ideal. I, get, I did get the job. Six weeks later, she called me and asked me if I wanted the position and I took it. What she didn't know is that my unemployment was going to run out the next week.
So the time I started and got my first paycheck, there was no, gonna be no gap in income. So I wasn't gonna lose any pay. I was gonna have unemployment up until the point of like, let's say October 10th. And then as of October 17th, I was gonna have my first paycheck. So that was incredible for me. But at my interview, I just wanna go back and just say this really quickly. I am finished with my interview. I'm talking to one of the girls behind the counter and she's asking me about my necklace. So I'm telling her. My son was killed 12 days ago. And this is just a little locket that I'm wearing in his memory right now. And she was like, oh my gosh, you know, and we had this long, deep conversation and I turn around to leave. And the restaurant in front of me, in my view, from the front of this portrait studio is Logan's Steakhouse. <laughs> now, <laughs> if that ain't, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. I mean, like, so that deer, going back to the deer, gave me such a huge sense of peace. And it helped me get through that interview. It helped me talk to the people and really, honestly, just nail the interview. I don't know how I did that, that close to the death of my child, but, um, but I did it. And sometimes you do things you, you don't believe you can do. You don't think you can until you try it. And then you can almost amaze yourself. So I ended up working at Portrait Innovations through January. And one more little piece of this story that's so fascinating. We would book 80 sessions and we would just rotate all day long. Every family that had a Logan in their family ended up in my sessions just by chance. So I'd be sitting there and I'd be getting to know the family and go, okay, now what's your name? And what's your name? And hey, what's your name? And the kid would say Logan. And I would about lose my damn mind, but I knew, I knew that that kid was supposed to be in my sessions because that was my reminder that Logan was still around me. Now, the deer stories go on and on. I could tell you 50 of this kind of thing that happened. I'm gonna tell you two. His first birthday after he died was May the 17th, 2014. It's middle of the day. We're gonna drive down to my mother's house with his, his daughter, who was four at the time, I've got my kids in a truck behind me and I'm driving down with the, the cookie cake and the balloons and we're gonna let set off balloons with photos attached to them with his information on the back in memory of Logan Evans. And we're driving down to my mother's house, quarter of a mile driveway, and midday, a deer bounds out in front of me and goes running down through the woods. My son behind me in the truck was like, oh my God, that really just happened. And I said, oh yeah, that just happened. So Logan was telling us on his birthday that he's here. And then one more story out of the 50. A couple years back, my daughter and I were really struggling. My oldest daughter, Ashlyn. My, Logan and Ashlyn were 15 months apart. So they were super close. Ashlyn and Jordan were two years apart. So the three oldest children were extremely close. They all hung out together and all that stuff. So my oldest daughter struggles as much as I do, but I was just super depressed and she was super depressed. And it was the day of his anniversary, the day I found his body, which is the worst day, August 7th. So we're sitting in my house and she's like, why don't we go up to the little local Mexican restaurant and get something to eat? just to get out of the house. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So as we're going down, from leaving my house, driving down the road, about to go over Logan's Crossing, which is the bridge I had built in his memory, middle of the day, a deer was standing beside his plaque at the bridge. Ashlyn looked at me, I looked at her, and we both just nodded and went, oh my God, thank you, Logan. I needed that. And I was like, fine, the rest of the day. It was this sense of peace. So now you know why a deer is so important to me. And this one was perfect. 
I found your paintings I liked. I found a couple that I've loved. But this one, for some reason, made me think of him. I don't know if it's all the blues in the painting. I don't know if it was just the fact that it's a young buck. I don't know if it's the fact that it's a Norgeson and I can really give him some depth and dimension when I paint it. I don't know, but bless Carol Peck for making me cry, <laughs> for being so thoughtful and so generous. And I'm gonna be paying her for shipping because I won't let her get by with just shipping it down here from Canada. I know the rates are out of control, um, but what an amazing gift she has given me. So you guys, every step in our life that we take leads us to something else. And I sit here and I kind of look at this painting and I go, where was I seven years ago? What mental place was I in seven years ago? I definitely cried a lot more, believe it or not. <laughs> but I look at how PTSD affected my life so severely. It started causing hemiplegic migraines to the point where I thought I was having real strokes. Like within a month or two after I lost my child, I ended up with a mass in my breast a month and a half after I lost him. And I didn't even tell my kids because I was so worried that I had breast cancer that I didn't want them to think they were losing their brother and their mom because they didn't have anybody else. So I didn't tell them and it ended up being okay. But I look at the path that I have been on since this incident happened and how it has changed me. And yes, it has physically destroyed my health I'm not gonna lie. I have zero tolerance for stress. This is why I had to leave major management positions because I'm a super overachiever. And so I not only put a lot of stress on myself, but I allow others to put a lot of stress on me. So I think of the path that led me to standing here in my own home, bringing you something as personal as a paint my number and I know some of you guys, you've told me your stories and you've told me how therapeutic Pay My Numbers and Diamond Paintings have been and your hobbies, how they've saved your life during COVID. Imagine how amazing it makes me feel to know that this has not only helped me, but it has helped you. And it has helped so many thousands of people across the world, not even in my own little corner of the world, but internationally, that I am able to touch your life and help you learn about a pay by number, something simple. I mean, like, who would have thought seven years ago when I went through this horrific ordeal that I'd, I'd be standing here helping people who have PTSD or super depression or anxiety and who need an outlet and I have helped you find an outlet maybe and there is nothing more satisfying than knowing every day when I go to bed at night that not only have my hobbies saved my life that my job might save yours so when I hear people say, oh my gosh, you're famous. I'm like, I have to laugh because I'm like, I only have 7,500 subscribers. <laughs> but every single one of those subscribers, you guys, you do not understand. People can just say things and not mean it. But I have never meant something so much in my life. Every single one of you keep me moving further every single day. You guys keep me wanting to live my life because now I have a purpose. I mean, I have a purpose with my kids. I have purpose with my grandkids. I have purpose with my new husband. But this gives me a purpose that is not about me. This is about you. So this deer symbolizes every single bit of that and it encompasses all of those things and all of those feelings 
And believe it or not, even though I can sit here and cry over this, it is so therapeutic, you guys. So therapeutic. Not only the process of paint by numbers and diamond painting and all the things that I'm going to bring you, but just the downtime, you know, the me time. So I know this was long winded. I got on here to show you a new painting that I'm super stoked about. I'm sorry you can't order this anymore, but at some point in the future, I'm hoping to be one of Norgeson's reps and we'll be able to sell a deer painting from my store. That is my goal. So that would be a wonderful addition to my future. So you guys, I so appreciate you sticking with me through this whole long story. You know my stories aren't short. There's always a backstory. But the bottom line is, as much as I'm struggling sometimes with PTSD and all the things that it has caused since then, you guys save my life every single time you watch one of my videos or that you comment and you say, this is how you've helped me. Or you say, Melanie, I loved what you did. I love how you approach this. I love, y'all don't know those comments. That's why I respond to every single one is because they mean something to me. You're not wasting your time leaving a comment, whether it be at the group, Patreon, YouTube, wherever. You're not wasting your time. I read every single one. And I know right now I can respond to every one. Maybe in the future I won't be able to do that. And that will break my heart, honestly. But that is why I do it because your opinion means so much to me. And hearing your stories means even more. So that's it, you guys. I promise, that's it, that's it. I stop now. Thank you, Carol Peck, for being such an amazing, thoughtful person. You are getting paid for the shipping on this, <laughs> if you ever give me the information. <laughs> All right, that's it. Um, I promise to be back soon. I know it might take me a while to get to this deer, but I'm going to definitely be showing you my progress once I'm able to start it. Uh, love you all, and thank you as always for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you back soon.